This video explains how to use the AVE function to calculate averages in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. As a first step in this tutorial, we need to create an example data frame, as you can see in lines two and three of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data set called data is appearing at the top right. And we can print this data frame to the bottom in the console by running line four of the code. And then you can see that our new data frame contains two columns called value and group and eight rows. Now let's assume that we want to calculate the average value of our values column. Then we might simply use the mean function as you can see in line six of the code. And in this case, I'm applying the mean function to our values column and I'm storing the output of this in a new data object that I'm calling mean all. So after running this line of code, this new data object mean all is appearing at the top right. And we can print the content of this data object by running line seven of the code. And then you can see at the bottom in the console that our mean value of our data frame column data value is equal to 3.875. However, as you can see, the mean function has returned the mean value only once. And this is a major difference compared to the AVE function, as you will see after applying this function. So in lines nine and 10 of the code, I'm using the AVE function to calculate the mean value of our data frame column data value, similar to the previous lines of code. And again, I'm storing the output of this in another data object that I'm calling AVE all. So after running these lines of code, a new data object called AVE all is appearing at the top right. And if you now print this data object to the console, you will see that the mean value is returned with the same number of elements as the number of elements in our data frame column. This has different advantages that I will show you in the following lines of code. So first of all, I could also use the AVE function to calculate the mean by group. And we can do that as you can see in lines 13 to 15 of the code. And in these lines of code, I'm specifying our values column. Then in addition to that, I'm also specifying our group indicator. And once again, I'm specifying the mean function. However, you could also replace this function by other functions such as the sum function or the standard deviation or the variance. However, after running lines 13 to 15 of the code, another data object called AVE group is appearing at the top right. And we can print the content of this data object to the console by running line 16 of the code. And then you can see that another vector of values is returned. However, this vector of values contains different values and each of the values corresponds to one of the groups in our data set. A big advantage of the AVE function can also be that we can now add this average vector to our previously created data frame. And we can do that as you can see in lines 18 and 19 of the code. So in these lines of code, I'm using the data.frame function. Within this function, I'm specifying our original data frame data, and I'm also specifying the group vector that we have created before. And then I'm storing the output of this in a new data frame that I'm calling data new. So after running lines 18 and 19 of the code, this new data frame is appearing at the top right, and we can print this data frame to the console by running line 20 of the code. And then you can see that we have added another column to our data frame, which contains the group averages that we have created based on the AVE function. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.